guys, it's your guy in the chair here, and look, week three is wrapped up and we're moving on to week four, and it has come to my attention that just because the Colts and Texans tied in week one doesn't mean that I tied in week one with my overall record. So with that being said, my overall record is 25 and 23 going into week four, I'm trying to improve on that record, guys, and I'm hoping to do that right now. So let's get into these picks. All right, so for our Thursday night game, look, we got the Bengals versus the Dolphins. Look, there's a lot of things to look for in this matchup. First of all, the Bengals are debuting their all-white helmets and their white, just crispy looking swagger styled uniforms and you know as much as people don't think uniforms play a part in people's you know product performances no they definitely do man the Bengals got got these icy white uniforms coming out this week on Thursday they're gonna want to perform the best that they can in those because them things are clean as hell I do have to admit and other than that though you got Tyreek Hill versus Eli Apple a matchup that everybody is looking forward to this year granted Tyreek Hill is gonna bake that boy Eli Apple we already know how that story ends just because Eli Apple is absolute trash now, the, another matchup to look for is Jamar Chase versus the man coverage on, you know, the Dolphins side. Jamar Chase has had a pretty slow past two weeks, I definitely say. So uh, He caught a touchdown on Sunday, but Sauce Gardner definitely locked his ass up a little bit, and he's be definitely had a few struggles the past two weeks against the Cowboys and the Jets. Jamar Chase is 100% going to bounce back this week. He's going to go off on uh, Thursday. He's going to go crazy. Now, look, where this, where this game really comes down for me, like as far as who's going to win, it's a short week for both sides. And Miami has just came off of two phenomenal wins. They beat the they beat the Ravens, had a phenomenal comeback. They beat the Bills last week in a heat stroke game where the Bills completely passed out because they weren't they weren't ready to play in that kind of weather. And they're coming off a short week. Now, granted, the Bengals are coming off a short week too, but for me, it's really more so of an urgency of who really needs to win this game. Miami has just won two incredible games. They won a divisional game last week, so they're looking pretty good right now, and I just feel like the team that's in the more so like urgency win now type mode is the Bengals. The Bengals know that they have to win this game or they're going to have a one and three start that's going to be a very slow start for them. It's going to look pretty rough making it to playoffs because they have a pretty average solid schedule like they have some tough games in the roads ahead and Miami is definitely one of them so they're gonna have to win this game I do think the Bengals pull this one out I think it's gonna be a very close one but I think Joe Burrow and these boys get it done at home 34 to 31 all right, so next up, we got the Vikings and the Saints. Look, this is another LSU receiver that has disappeared in the past two weeks and has had an APB put out for him. We need to find this young man this week. I'm talking about Justin Jefferson. Look, Justin Jefferson has been slow these past two weeks. The Vikings did come off a very close, gritty win against the Lions last week, and this week they play the Saints, and look, Justin Jefferson's going to be back. He's going to have a good a good week this week, in my opinion. Dalvin Cook is dealing with a shoulder injury, so they're going to manage that. Mattinson, look, for some whatever reason, Mattinson seems to get better production on his carries than Cook does. So I think they like Mattinson a little bit more than Cook for some odd reason. I don't know what the deal is there, but Mattinson is a very good backup option. They will He will be very fine in that role if Dalvin Cook is not 100%, if he can't play all the snaps, which more than likely he won't be able to because I think he's going to be wearing an arm cast or something like that. He's going to try to force something but either way look the Vikings play the Saints on Sunday the Saints are at home and the Saints these past two weeks have come off of games where they could have won but they you know they just they just didn't well I mean the Bucks game they they could have won to a certain extent but then they just you know the Bucks ran away with the lead now the thing about it is Jameis Winston is just doing, you know, filling up the stat sheet with a lot of yards, but those yards are just aren't leading up to anything. They're not able to finish drives. They're not able to score on drives, and that's really what their problem has been the last two weeks. Granted, the Vikings defense is pretty good. Uh, look, I do see the Saints making a big fight in this game, and I do see them trying to make a stand to win this game. I just don't think they come out with it just because, like I said, Jameis Winston's drives lead to a lot of nothing. There are, stat there are stats and there are yards that prove that, yeah, he could have won this game, but at the end of the day, he's just not able to finish drives. He's not going to be able to capitalize, and I think he's going to run into the same problems uh, against the Vikings this week, so... The Saints can win. I, I definitely... They, they, a possible upset here. I'm, I'm not going to be surprised if the Saints do win, but my personal pick is going to be the Vikings here. I'm picking them 31 to 26. All right, look, next up, we got the Lions and the Seahawks. Look, it's pretty simple for me here. Although the Lions will not have Armin Ross St. Brown, or at least I don't think they will. And DeAndre Swift, will more either if he plays, he'll probably be on a snap count. Either way, the Lions are the more grittier team here. They're at home. They just came off a close loss last week, and they're honestly looking better and better as weeks go by. Like, they're looking like a very competitive team. Seattle clearly does not need to win this game. They need to tank because what are you doing? You're not going anywhere. I mean, the Lions, 
The Lions just need to prove that they are competitive enough to a certain extent. They don't need to win too many games because I think they need to put themselves in a good draft position just to, you know, continue the streak of getting a lot better throughout the years. But here, it's pretty simple for me. I got the Lions winning this one 28 to 23 just because the Lions are just simply better. Like, it's just, it's it's really not that hard for me. Like, Seattle, no. They don't need to win this game. I don't think they do win this game. Simple as that. All right, so next up, we got the Jets and the Steelers. Look. My question for the Steelers is this. When the hell are you guys going to give Kenny Pickett a chance? Because Mitch Trubisky is not good. He's not that. He's not very good at all. You guys are making my picks look pretty bad. Look, I, I enjoy seeing you lose just like the next Ravens fan, but I need you guys to stop making my picks look bad and actually win this one this week. I'm going to pick the Steelers again this week for whatever reason, just because they're playing the Jets. They're at home. They definitely need to get a win. And like I said, Mike Tomlin has just never been below 500. I'm probably going to ride that stat until the end of this year to just for me personally in order I have to see Mike Tomlin fall below 500 for me to just start rooting against that man because I just I just haven't seen it. Like any all the odds have been stacked against this man with Big Ben as a statue last year for a quarterback and then had to deal with Duck Hodges and things like that, man. It's just like, dude, I don't like and he still hasn't been below 500. So this man has made it work. Um, I'm picking the Steelers again on Sunday to win this one. I think it'll be a close one, though, because the Jets just came off a pretty sad blowout against the Bengals. But look, I think the Steelers just bounced back in this one. Hopefully, I hope that Mitchell Trubisky can do enough to get this game won. But my score prediction is going to be 23-20 to 20 Steelers. All right, so next up, we got the Bears and the Giants. Look, it's, it's as simple as this. As long as the Giants can stop the run, you can stop the Bears because Justin Fields isn't throwing the ball. Whatever's going on on that offensive side, it, he's not throwing the ball at all, man. Fields looks horrendous in these first three weeks, in my opinion, man. I don't give a damn if the Bears are 2-1. and one. I don't really care if they won against the 49ers in some monsoon. I don't really care what they've done so far. Justin Fields himself. Separate Justin Fields from the Bears for a second. The Bears are 2-1. and one. Justin Fields has looked like ass. I don't understand what's going on there. Now, Daniel Jones really ain't that much better, but granted, I've seen him at least try to make a play against you know the Cowboys on Sunday and granted his offensive line is absolutely horrendous had him running for his life but the Bears don't have that kind of pass attack or pass rushing attack and look he, like I said as long as you're able to stop the run you're going to be able to beat the Bears I think the Giants are going to be able to pull this one out I got them winning 24 to 17 the Bears just got to get it they got to find a way to get if if the Bears can find a way to get a, some passing attack going or get fields going in the pass game you know maybe they can step up and do something a lot better against shittier teams but no, this shit, well, <laughs> the Giants, I'm back, look, I'm back on to calling the Giants shits after a week because they lost to the Cowboys. Yeah, I was pretty upset about that. So, yeah, I guess I can call them shits this week, but they still got my pick, like I said, 23-17. to 17. All right, so next up, we got the Colts and the Titans. Look, the Colts have finally got their first win of the season. Hopefully, that starts up their momentum to get some more wins this year. And look, they're playing an AFC South opponent, which is probably setting up to be one of the worst divisions in football this year. So, look. I think the Colts got to just come in here and stomp on these fools. I think the Colts are at home this week. They definitely are. And I think after that win they got last week against the Chiefs, I think they just got a lot of momentum going. Granted, the Titans did beat the Raiders, but I wouldn't really I wouldn't really say your momentum or your mindset is too high after, you know, beating an 0 and 3 team. Like it's not like I said, we'll see we'll see after this week truly how bad or how, you know, whatever the Raiders the Raiders status is. is. But as far as I'm concerned, the Titans still aren't that good. The Titans definitely just aren't impressive to me at all outside of nothing. I mean, Derrick Henry isn't even looking that impressive to me this year, man. I'm I'm just, he's looking pretty slow. It's looking like it's just getting all those, you know, rushing attempts are getting to him. But at the end of the day, look, I'm going to pick the Colts to win this one 24 to 21. All right. So next up, we got the Chargers and the Texans. Look. The Chargers have had it rough these past two weeks, man. Losing a close one to the Chiefs and then essentially losing Rashad Slater for the year. They lost Guyton and they got their asses whooped against the Jaguars last week. Now, granted, Keenan Allen is back practicing this week. That is great news for the Chargers offense because Keenan Allen is a piece that they were definitely missing. They need a guy to, you know, cut the zones up and just stop short because Mike Williams is only the big catch guy. It's not really going to do you much good. They need Keenan Allen in that offense. They're getting him back. Austin Eckler needs Jesus because I don't know what these guys are doing, man. And with Rashawn Slater gone, I'm not sure if Eckler's production is going to get any better or worse, but the Chargers have got to figure it out. This is the week to figure it out because like I keep saying week after week, the Texans are not playing to win. They just want to show that they're a competitive team and they want to do enough to make sure that they the NFL thinks they're not just tanking on purpose. And once they get to a certain point in the fourth quarter, they're just going to dial it back and then 
lose the game for you. So the Chargers, this is a bounce back week for you. At least I hope it is because your schedule is pretty easy. Herbert, I need you to go ballistic this week because my fantasy team definitely needs it. But look, I got the Chargers winning this one 34 to 24. All right, so next up we got the Browns and the Falcons. Look, I got to give credit where credit is due. Jacoby Brissett is actually managing a lot better than I thought he would. He's actually doing a very decent job with that team. Actually, I'd say more than decent. He's actually doing a really good job with that team for what he's got. And the Browns go into this week looking to get another win. Now, granted, Miles Garrett is injured, so the defense... I mean, the defense is still going to hold up. Like, they still got Jed Davian Clowney on that other side. And, I mean, they're still talented enough to beat the Falcons. Like, it's the it's the Falcons at this point. And, like I said, Jacoby Brissett has actually impressed me to the point where, no, like, I actually have confidence in this man beating a, beating a bad team. Like, as long as Amari Cooper, I have to bite my tongue because he's actually balled out the last two weeks. I still hate Amari Cooper. I'm not a big Amari Cooper fan. I think at some point these weeks will catch up to you and you're going to have some bad football. I mean, just <laughs> you don't want to wish, you know, I'm not wishing injury on anybody. That's not what bad football is. I just think he's going to have a bad game just coming up. I mean, I'm not the biggest Amari Cooper guy. I can't lie to you. So I'm waiting on that bad game from Amari Cooper. But essentially, I look, they play the Falcons this week and I did pick the Falcons to win last week. But it's back to the drawing board for you, Falcons, because it's time to start tanking again and start losing. So without the makes it easy for me, I got the Browns winning this one 28 to 24. All right, so look, we got another game I'm looking forward to this weekend. We got the Commanders versus the Cowboys. Why am I looking forward to the Commanders versus the Cowboys? Because it's another opportunity for me to watch the Commanders piss down their leg and shit themselves, man. It's all that is the most fun I get out of the week anytime the Ravens aren't well, a Ravens win is always going to bring me joy no matter what, but another thing that brings me joy on football Sundays are watching the Commanders or the Redskins lose, and I'm ready to see that again. Look, the Cowboys pass rush is absolutely, as Michael Irvin said, <laughs> finger looking good, man. That Micah Parsons and them boys are absolutely out of their minds, and the Commanders, the way they looked on Sunday, they're going to look just as lost because the Eagles, <laughs> the Eagles made them boys look absolutely stunned, man, and look, the Cowboys are going to do the same thing to Carson Wentz. They're going to get up in their face a lot. Is it going to be the blowout that it was against the Eagles and Commanders? No, not necessarily. I think the Commanders definitely put up a, little, a few more points at least, but no. Cooper Rush is undefeated as a starter so far, and he's absolutely balling. He's doing what he can. The Cowboys' weapons are stepping up. C.D. Lamb just needs to catch. If he had, if he made that catch, he would have had two TDs or... Uh, was that a TD catch? No, it was a TD catch. Yeah, he would have had two TDs on Monday night. Just make up for that catch, young man. You did make up for that catch. And like I said, that pass rush is... Finger looking good, baby. And I just need y'all to go ahead and beat them commanders like I know you're going to do. So I got the Cowboys winning this one 31 to 24. All right, so next up we got the Jaguars and the Eagles. Look, there's only two defeated, undefeated teams left in the NFL. That's the Dolphins and the Eagles. There will only be one undefeated team after this week, and that'll be the Philadelphia Eagles. Look, the Jaguars have looked very impressive. I got to give credit where credit is due. I'm glad Trevor Lawrence is actually able to, like I said, I did predict that, well, anybody would have known that after Urban Meyer got fired. I was ready to, you know, start taking Trevor Lawrence's career a lot more seriously once Meyer got fired because that was just a shit show. Now, you're going into this game this week. The Jags are playing really good football. The Eagles are playing fantastic football. The Eagles are at home. You're not, they're just not beating them. Like, Jalen Hurts is playing out of his goddamn mind. This man is playing all the best football he can. He's earning, he's earning his next, you know, extension or his first extension, however you want to put it. It's his first extension. He's earning this contract, and look, man, look, it's as simple as this. The Eagles are going to whoop that ass. I, like, I don't have to... I don't have to put it any plainly. Like, it's it's as simple as that. Like, the Jaguars are going to play competitive. They're going to do what they can. But all in all, the Eagles are just going to outlast them because they're better on both sides of the field. So I got the Eagles winning this one 31 to 24. All right, so next up, we got the Bills versus the Ravens, the game I'm actually looking forward to this week. I've actually been looking forward to this since the schedule came out. I'm also very curious as to why this is still a 1 o'clock game. This is Josh Allen versus Lamar Jackson, two MVP candidates. Why the hell isn't this Sunday night? Granted, the Ravens do play on Sunday night next week against the Bengals, and my God, I've been waiting a long time for that one. I've been waiting a long time for that one. But right now, we play the Bills, and look. I got to give you my fan perspective and my non-biased perspective. Look, from a fan's perspective, I want to lose this game because I expect to see the Bills somewhere down the road, probably in the AFC Championship or at least in the playoffs at some point. And normally, you know, in the trend in football is it's hard to beat a team twice. So you'd rather take your L early, learn your lesson, and then be ready for them the second time around, which is what I want the Ravens to do. Granted... The Ravens can win this game. <laughs> they definitely can. It just It's going to depend on the defense. It has nothing to do with what Lamar does. Lamar is going to ball out, I'm very convinced. Lamar Jackson is on a tear. He's trying to get his money, and he's just going to play at the MVP level rate he's playing on. It really just all depends on whatever the Ravens' defense does. And in the first four weeks, from what you've been shown, you have film. 
if you had to rely on the Ravens defense to stop to get a stop on Josh Allen and that uh, passing attack on the Buffalo Bills, I really don't see it happening. I I don't like this is this is me. This is a Ravens fan telling you this. Devar- Devontae Parker torched us last week, man. And granted, Devontae Parker is good, but these this receiving core is better. You got Steph Diggs, Gabe Davis, and Isaiah McKenzie. Like no, like you got actual threats out here, and you have Josh Allen throwing it to them. So no, the Ravens defense is probably gonna get torched again this week, and it's just gonna make us look bad. We have no killers on that side, man, and it's honestly pissing me off. No pass rush. It's just looking weak, man. Hopefully, you know, uh, Jason Pierre-Paul is something, man. Hopefully, he's able to do something, but it's just us signing another vet that is just a presence at that point. I don't know if he's really going to make a, a full impact, but look, I think the Ravens lose this game, period. Like, fan fan perspective and non-biased perspective, I think we lose either way just because I don't think our defense is going to be able to get the stops that we need to stop this offense. Look, Lamar Jackson's going to be electrifying. If we win, I'm going to be ecstatic. I'm going to be happy. I just hope we don't run into the Bills in the playoffs because, like I said, it's hard to beat a team twice. I, I really rather take our lesson now. I really, yeah, I'd rather take our L now, learn our lesson, and move on and just beat them down the road in the playoffs when it actually matters. I Look. A week four matchup against this team is not going to matter, you know, in the long run because it doesn't really affect our division in any way. It is a loss on our record, but it's the, it would only be the second loss. It's plenty of foot, more football to be played. So with that being said, I got the Bills winning this one 34 to 31. All right, so next up we got the Cardinals and the Panthers. Look, I'm going to go with the Cardinals here just because the Panthers have not looked that impressive to me these past two weeks. They did beat the Saints last week, but look, that wasn't a really impressive win. The defense played outstanding, but like I said, with Jameis Winston on that other side, it's like... You know, he's, he's bound to make a boneheaded mistake at some point. Now, you got Kyler Murray versus Baker Mayfield, and really I'm just betting on the quarterbacks at this point. I think Kyler Murray definitely needs to show some sort of will to win this week. Um, I think he's going to just pull it out. Honestly, yeah, it's, it's not really a whole analytic explanation of why I think the Cardinals are going to win. I just think I just have a feeling they're going to win just because the Panthers, like I said, are not that impressive. I think the Cardinals do need to get a win under their belt just to manage whatever the hell's going on because like I said week by week they are showing desperately that they need DeAndre Hopkins on their defense they are not on their defense they need DeAndre Hopkins on their offense but they don't essentially need him this week to beat this Panthers team because they can do it and I think they will do it and the final score will be 26 to 24. All right, so next up, we got the Broncos and Raiders. And look, I'm I'm very conflicted about this game because the Broncos have looked absolute trash through three weeks, and they're 2-1. And, and that's that's crazy to say. A team, well, no, actually, it's not because the Bears are 2-1 and, and Justin Fields has looked horrendous. But the Broncos in general, for me, have just looked absolutely terrible. Like, I don't know what's going on on that side. Russell Wilson is just getting cornier by the second. He's really losing me, and I really hope he bounces back just performance-wise. I don't know who to pick here because it's like Devontae Adams got signed to this Raiders team. And if they go 0-4, and and I already didn't think they were making the playoffs, but if the Raiders go 0-4, that just makes Devontae Adams and them look so bad. That just, to go from Aaron Rodgers, who actually just is 2-1 right now, probably going to go 3-1 into this week because they play the Patriots, and you're going to be 0-4, buddy? No, that's going to look pretty bad on your part. I want to go, I'm going to go with the Raiders here due to the fact that they're at home and just due to the fact that... they can't go 0-4. They really can't. They they cannot afford to go 0-4 or they have lost this divisional race, in my opinion. 0-4 is a very bad start for them. Um, and it, it's just going to be really hard for them to bounce back. So just because, And like I said, the Broncos keep promising their offense is going to look a lot better. That's not really hard to say when you're playing against the Raiders this week. But granted, your defense has to look a little better too. Just because, Well, your defense looked good last week, but... This is Derek Carr. This is a divisional game, and the Raiders are at home. So, personally, going to pick the Raiders to win this one 30 to 27. But don't be surprised if the Raiders go 0 and 4. Well, you're going to be a little, yeah. I mean, I guess we'd be a little surprised. That's the only that, that's the only reason I'm picking the Raiders because I can't really see them going 0 and 4. Like that would be absolutely abysmal and make Demonte Adams just look so bad. He can't afford that. Derek Carr and these boys can't afford that. They got to get their first win at some point. So it's going to happen this week. Let's ride. All right, so next up, we got the Packers and the Patriots. Look, Aaron Rodgers is starting to put it together a little bit, or at least he's going following that same trend he did last year, getting a bad week one loss and then putting starting to put it together the weeks after. He's still going to do it this week as well because the Patriots don't have Mac Jones, who is an absolute baller. Uh, speedy recovery to that man. Prayers up for him. But, you know, with Brian Hoyer as the backup quarterback, and granted, the Packers don't have Jair Alexander. He'll probably be out for at least like a month or so, but... 
essentially, they still have Rizul uh, Douglas. They still have Preston Smith. And that defense is still very good, very talented, very disciplined. They're going to be able to, you know, hold the Pac Patriots offense just because it really ain't that special. There's not really much going on over there. And Brian Hoyer, honestly, Mac Jones makes that offense a lot more special than it is. I think Brian, I think it probably gets worse with Brian Hoyer back there. I mean, actually, duh, he's the backup quarterback. It's, it's supposed to get worse. Well, not, it's not always true because the Cowboys offense looks a lot better with Cooper Rush behind it. But we'll wait for Dak to, you know, plead his case. We'll wait for that. But anyway, look, the Packers are going to win it here. The Packers are just starting to put it together. Romeo Dobbs had a great game on Sunday. He's probably starting to put it together. I think Rodgers is going to follow that momentum and make that kid a star. I think Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon's, you know, the running attack is just going to be a lot for the Patriots. And I think, look, at the end of the day, the Packers are just going to be able to pull this out 31-17. to all right, for our Sunday night game, we got the Chiefs and Bucks. Look, this is a very interesting matchup because you got Mahomes coming off a loss and you got Brady coming off a loss, and they are both pissed the fuck off. Now, granted, what's going to be the difference maker here is defense, which the Chiefs just don't have. They don't. They're not. At least they don't have the defense to stop Tom Brady. They yeah, they don't have that. Granted, Tom and Tom Brady's going to have Mike Evans back this week. He's going to have his guy Chris Godwin is supposed to come back, but I'm not really going to put much you know faith into that. He doesn't really need to play, in my opinion. He needs to rest. They need to stop trying to force that because he just needs to rest. But Mike Evans will play on Sunday. And look, as far as I'm concerned, that's all Brady needs to beat this Chiefs team. Granted, this will be a very close matchup. This will be a very great matchup between the two. But at the end of the day, that Bucks defense is just too good. They're going to be able to stop Mahomes. Granted... It's not really Mahomes' fault that they're able to stop Mahomes. He's just, I don't know what got into Travis Kelsey on Sunday, dropping them passes. He's got to make up for that. But look, the Bucks' defense is just very good. And I, they're going to be able to, you know, get in Mahomes' head, in my opinion. They're going to be able to create pressure. Brady's not losing this one, man. Like I said, it's a very interesting matchup because both of these guys have lost. And now they're facing each other. And I know both of them want to beat each other so badly. I just don't think the Chiefs are going to be able to pull this one out, man. So I got the Bucks winning this one 28 to 24. All right, and for our Monday night matchup, we got the Rams versus the 49ers. Look, the 49ers got to bounce back after that very horrendous loss against the Broncos. And granted, like I said, the Rams still got a lot of question marks to answer on both sides of the ball just because, well, maybe not more so the offensive side than the defensive side because the offense still looks like they don't know where to go with it outside of Cooper Cup and they don't know how to get Robinson involved. They just look like a, a mess on that end. Granted, like they just beat the Cardinals, but the Cardinals ain't really that impressive. I think the 49ers really need a bounce back win this week. I think they need not only that, but for their overall morale, they just need that. They just need that win for uh, the NFC Championship last year. They really just need to get back. So for all that, for all those reasons, I'm just gonna pick the 49ers in this one because they just they just need it. Like they just need a very co convincing momentum win, and the Rams is the way to do it. That's that's gonna that's gonna that's a divisional opponent. That's gonna give them a, a leg up in the race. And I just think that I just think that's how the cards are gonna fall in this one, man. I just think the 49ers are gonna be able to pull this one out. I got them winning this one 27 to 24. All right, guys, so those are my picks for week four. Guys, let me know in the comments what your picks are for week four. What are the biggest upsets that you got going on this weekend? What's the biggest blowout you got going on this weekend? What's the most surprising performance we're going to see? Let me know in the comments. Be sure to like, subscribe. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it, guys. Look, this is your guy in the chair. More content coming to you soon.